What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So there you have undefeated two-time heavyweight world champion British superstar boxer Tyson and Gypsy King Fury. He states in an interview that he's doing, or a private conversation, dare I say, with legendary former retired Hall of Fame iconic superstar boxer Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. With that said, we know that legendary promoter, top-ranked CEO and promoter Bob Arum, he came out today and it has been reported that Bob Arum, he has secured uh, a date June 26. Ironically, that's the same date, undefeated two-time, two-division world champion, four-time world champion, superstar boxer Javante Tank Davis. He will be making his pay-per-view ring return date against uh 140-pound WBA regular undefeated world champion Mexican superstar boxer Mario Barrios. That's June 26th. Uh, as Javante Tank Davis, he's going to dare to be great and go up to the junior welterweight 140-pound limit and challenge Mario Barrios. With that stated, uh, uh, Bob Arum, he secured venues in Las Vegas for that date, okay? Uh, as he stated that uh, Tyson Fury needs to stay active and he... Uh, is under the belief, and they are under the belief that, and they have concerns that the undisputed showdown with fellow countrymen, two-time unified heavyweight world champion, British superstar boxer Anthony Joshua, as that is going to uh, be postponed, and it may not take place till at the earliest August, according to Bob Arum. Uh, we know his co-promoter uh, and his partner in uh, Queensberry Promotions Hall of Fame legendary promoter in the UK, United Kingdom, uh, Frank Warren, he stated that at the earliest he believes that it's going to take place is late August, early September. Now, Bob Arum, he has come out and he has secured a date of June 26th for Tyson Fury's ring return as Tyson Fury has not been active since February of 2020. So there you have, that's a very long time to be inactive, okay? So Tyson Fury has been active currently right now, 14 months out the ring. And they stated that it's not healthy physically and mentally for Tyson Fury to stay inactive. Tyson Fury is back, back in Las Vegas and he's training. Ironically enough, his rival, uh, Olympic bronze medalist, former WBC, American heavyweight world champion, superstar boxer, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, he had also has re-entered training camp as well. Okay, so this could be an indication as Tyson Fury and Frank Warren and now Bob Arum says that there's some things that need to be ironed out behind the scenes, not just the site fees, not just the offers, not just the, you know, negotiations with uh, Anthony Joshua, but there's other things that needs to be handled uh, behind the scenes. And they are alluding to the situation with Deontay Wilder, who has them in arbitration and they have to settle that. So Frank Warren is saying that you, they have to uh, settle that as well before they could uh, move forward, proceed forward with Anthony Joshua. So now he has secured a date. And Deontay Wilder, we see photos and we see um, we see reports that he has now entered training camp and he's brought in uh, his uh, good friend and former uh, star world heavyweight title contender, uh, Malik King Scott. So Malik Scott you know, uh, is now training Deontay Wilder. They're back in, getting in the groove of things. Uh, and now we see that Tyson Fury uh, is preparing himself for a, a plan B, as Bob Arum says that they're, they're setting up their, their, their plan B, you know, to have Tyson Fury re-enter the ring June 26th. Well, we're in the end of April. So that would give them about two months. You know, uh, you get all of May and uh, essentially all of June you know, uh, to have a fight between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in Las Vegas. Uh, because if he's contractually obligated to give Deontay Wilder a trilogy match, now I can see, you know, um, them being allowed to maneuver around and, you know, uh, secure a fight with Anthony Joshua. But I'm all but certain that they won't rule and allow Tyson Fury to just fight a tune-up, a warm-up, instead of fighting Deontay Wilder and then go into a fight with Anthony Joshua after that when he's contractually obligated to give Deontay Wilder the trilogy match. Okay. Um, so with that said, this is interesting as Tyson Fury, he said that he'll be back in July. Okay. Obviously Anthony Joshua, he stated that he wants the fight to take place in early July because, uh, his trainer, Rob McCracken, 
uh, is going to be, you know, heading off to the Olympics to Japan uh, July 23rd for the Olympics. He's the head of the United Kingdom Olympic Olympics team. OK, uh, so he's heading off to Japan July 23rd. That's the reason. That's one of the reasons why Frank Warren, he stated that it's not possible unless uh, Anthony Joshua is going to have a completely different trainer or Rob McCacken is not going to commit to the U, the U, uh, the U, um, United Kingdom Olympic team. OK, with that said, we did we did see Bob uh, Anthony Joshua state that he was willing to bring it, bring in and take Floyd Mayweather, legendary retired Hall of Famer, former pound for pound king, former pay-per-view king. Floyd Mayweather up on his offer. Floyd Mayweather said that he wanted to help prepare Anthony Joshua for his fight with Tyson Fury. Uh, and Anthony Joshua said he's willing to take him up on that offer. Now, would he, you know, incorporate Floyd Mayweather's uh, game plan, his style, you know, uh, a whole new approach for this mega fight with Tyson Fury? Who knows? He says that he's willing to do so, okay? Uh, but obviously, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that needs to be ironed out. Uh, and we have, you know, um, a case where, uh, Tyson Fury is seemingly just wanting to get in the ring and get active. Okay. Uh, so at this point in time, we could have been had the trilogy match between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. That could have been over and done with winner, uh, being Tyson Fury or winner being Deontay Wilder and either guy focusing on at this point in time, Anthony Joshua for undisputed with no other issues or no other robots in the way. Uh, but Tyson Fury, he decided that he wanted to maneuver around it. Why? Because it's a high risk uh, uh, situation and scenario, and they want to secure this undisputed all British showdown. Okay, it's historic in the UK. Uh, the last time they had an undisputed uh, heavyweight champion was over a hundred years ago, well over a hundred years ago. Uh, because, like I always state, Lennox Lewis is seen as seen as not being a pure United Kingdom a soul fighter. Okay, he represented Jamaica. He also represented Canada as well as the United Kingdom, and that's the reason why his fight with Frank Bruno. You know, Frank Bruno was pushing the narrative that, you know, uh, he was a pure and 100% uh, Brit British fighter and, and Lennox Lewis was not. OK, so with that said, he was a true British fighter. So it's been it was 100 years since uh, Lennox Lewis even beat uh, Evander Holyfield back in 1999 uh, to become undisputed. And it was 100 years at that mark. So now that was 1999. That was 22 years ago. So we're talking about 122 years since they had an undisputed uh, heavyweight British uh, fighter. And they're looking to do so. See, this is a win-win scenario with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua because uh, they both solely represent the United Kingdom. Now, uh, Anthony Joshua, he does tap into his roots in Africa, you know, uh, his family roots and his history. So he does represent Africa as well. Uh, Tyson Fury, obviously, he represents his uh, his culture and the um, gypsy culture, you know. So with that said, you know, but they're both born and bred in United Kingdom fighters, and that's what they represent first and foremost, okay? That wasn't the case with Lennox Lewis. So, uh, you know, there's a win-win situation. Once the fight is made, once it comes to fruition, there's no doubt you're going to have an undisputed UK fighter, no matter how it plays out. And that's the reason why Matron CEO and promoter uh, promoter of Anthony Joshua, Eddie Hearn, he's so uh, hard pressed to make this fight because it's historic. Okay. It cements his legacy on top of and everything else. Okay. Uh, because he would have delivered uh, the first undisputed heavyweight UK champion in over 120 years. Okay. So that's historic for him to be the one to deliver that. That's the reason why Frank Warren also wants to be a part of it. Although Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn are rivals, it's historic. They're in a win-win situation, okay? They can't lose. Now, obviously, Eddie Hearn, he would like his fighter, Anthony Joshua, to be victorious because now you uh, now you have the, you add the cherry on top, okay? Uh, but either which way, Eddie Hearn, is, is his legacy is cemented as a promoter, being able to deliver undisputed heavyweight world champion. He wants to create history. And as we know, as the heavyweight division goes in the sport of boxing, so goes the sport of boxing, okay? Uh, so with that said, the heavyweight division carries the sport. If you're able to deliver an undisputed heavyweight champion, that speaks volumes, okay? He'll forever go down in history. So that's what he's looking to do. He's in a win-win situation in doing so. And it's not the case when it's Deontay Wilder because now you're in a 50-50. If Deontay Wilder wins, the belts come back to the United States. And, uh, you know, we've seen this movie before. We go and, and 
Now you now a lot of pressure will be on Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury in this case. In this case, it will be a lot of pressure on Tyson Fury because there's an asterisk by his win over Deontay Wilder in the second fight. And not to mention, he will have this undisputed UK heavyweight fight looming in the background. So he will have a lot of pressure on him, okay? Uh, and, and if Deontay Wilder was to beat Tyson Fury, and obviously we know at the very least Deontay Wilder has a puncher's chance having a the highest knockout percentage in the history of the sport of boxing. So uh, you factor in if he did beat Tyson Fury and then he takes on Anthony Joshua, well, there's a lot of pressure on Anthony Joshua to deliver the undisputed heavyweight world champion in over 120 years in the United Kingdom. And if he don't do so, he'll be remembered for not doing so. So you understand there's a lot of pressure there for both guys, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn as well, okay? So uh, it's looking like he's he has they're setting up his backup plan. As I stated, uh, Bob Arum has secured a venue for July, June 26. Maybe he meant July 26. So we got to see how that plays out because July 26 is actually a Monday. So maybe uh, Bob Arum he meant to say he said that he secured a date for June 26. Well, that's the first, that's the same date as Javante Tank Davis pay per view event. So uh, I'm hard pressed to see that. Uh, PBC Premier Boxing Champions and Al Heyman would uh, allow Deontay Wilder to compete with uh, Javante Tank Davis unless they plan on moving Javante Tank Davis' fight. They moved this fight with Leo Santa Cruz uh, that was initially scheduled for November 14th, and that was that was moved to Halloween two weeks later. So maybe, uh, and that was a pay-per-view event. So maybe they take the same route and re uh, reroute that fight as well. So we got to see how this unfolds and plays out. But uh, make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to new media. Shout out to Black Media Raw. Make sure you like and share your videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace. Hey, this is Ebony Bridges, Blonde Bomber, and you're watching Blue Blood Sports TV.